High-profile scandals don't happen very often in the IT world. So when OpenAI's board of directors fired co-founder and CEO Sam Altman on November 17, 2023, the public was shocked. The company claimed that Altman got the boot because of a lack of candor with directors. When was the last time you've heard a phrase like that? The whole thing was like a three-part Greek drama. First, at a general online meeting, Sam is fired and Greg Brockman, the company's co-founder and CTO, was demoted. Altman then published a bizarre post insinuating that fellow OpenAI co-founder and chief scientist Ilya Sutskever was involved in his dismissal. A campaign to support Altman was launched on social media. OpenAI employees said they would leave the company following the co-founder. Investors began to put pressure on the company. In the end, an agreement was reached to bring Altman back as CEO. Later in an interview with Time magazine, Sam will bring up Ilya again. How was Sam Altman able to make such an impact on artificial intelligence development? Is Sam Altman Chad GPT incarnate? And how will OpenAI develop further? Presumably, after what happened, investors and the board will make adjustments and reach a consensus. But how could such a serious conflict of interest take place in a large-scale company that is literally changing our world as we speak? I'm Nick, and we're about to find out. In 2023, Sam Altman's picture graced the cover of Time magazine. He was named one of the 100 influential people in the field of artificial intelligence. The story of his journey deserves a movie adaptation. An ordinary young man growing up in St. Louis was able to turn the idea of artificial intelligence upside down and start the digital revolution. Where did Sam Altman start? How did he manage to create a large-scale startup like OpenAI? The future boy genius was born in 1985. He was the youngest in a family of three. Sam also has an older brother and sister. Programming was his thing from an early age. The boy loved books, and at the age of eight, once his parents got him a computer, Sam immediately put his knowledge into practice. Here's how he described this moment in an interview with Esquire magazine. Quote, on my eighth birthday, my parents gave me a Mac LC2. And you know, it was like, it cost like $2,219.93. It was a terribly expensive thing that wasn't that good. It was a 40 megabyte hard drive. And then we put it in my bedroom. That was a turning point in my life. Here's me before I had a computer. Here's me after, end quote. He attended a prestigious private school in Burbank, LA. Sam wasn't afraid to argue and stand for his opinion. In the future, this ability would help him as a CEO. Already in school, he was designing websites for small businesses and nonprofits. Later, he enrolled at Stanford to study computer science, and as Sam himself puts it, he was in love with computer science before, but really fell in love with it during his studies. He wanted to study artificial intelligence, but in the early 2000s, Stanford didn't offer much in that area. Sam recalls one professor saying in class, quote, the only sure way to have a bad career in artificial intelligence is to work with neural networks. We decided they just don't work, end quote. After the liberation, 19-year-old Sam decides to drop out of college and launch a startup with two of his classmates. His first high-profile work was Looped, a mobile app that connected users based on their location. Initial funding of 30 million U.S. dollars was provided by Y Combinator and Sequoia in 2005. At its peak, Looped had 5 million registered users. But by 2012, the popularity of the company subsided and Sam agreed to sell for $43 million. What would you do with that kind of money? in your mid-twenties. Hmm? Sam traveled a lot and enjoyed the lifestyle of a man, well, with money. During that period, he bought two McLaren F1s. Racing and cars are still Altman's great passion. To date, he has the McLarens, a Lexus LFA, as well as several Teslas, on top of things that we don't know about. Disagreements with Elon did not prevent Altman from actually buying Musk's company's products, but we'll get back to that in a bit. After a short break, the boy genius returns to Silicon Valley, where Paul Graham himself makes Sam a tempting offer to become a partner at the Y Combinator. Then he can not only learn from Paul directly, but also create new startups. Under Altman's leadership, the company's portfolio grew to $100 billion. His strategy was to invest in startups, working on promising ideas, and wow, did Airbnb, Dropbox, and Stripe turn out to be promising. 
In 2014, developing AI was considered a dead end. There were almost no success stories, and contrary to public opinion, Sam Altman teams up with Elon Musk to create a new company, the mission of the enterprise for artificial intelligence to actually start benefiting humanity. Sam has recruited nine top experts to join the company, and then Sam's explanation for the small staff was, quote, the best people are better than just good people, end quote. Research began, but work was slow. The company was spending millions of dollars a month on cloud computing. Gradually, Elon began to become disillusioned with the project. In early 2018, there was a conversation between Musk and Altman. Elon didn't like the pace at which the company was developing. He believed that OpenAI was far behind Google. To accelerate the company's growth, Elon wanted to take reins and control of the company and run it himself. Altman disagreed. After this conversation, Elon left the company and OpenAI was left without a major investor and made an enemy in the form of Tesla, which was developing its own artificial intelligence for autonomous driving. Now the companies will compete with one another. In the battle for market supremacy, Tesla poached one of OpenAI's best minds, Andre Karpati, who became the architect of the autonomous driving program at Tesla, but then later announced he was returning to OpenAI. Sam sought investors for the company, but was turned down for a long, long time. The nonprofit organization required massive funding. Then he takes a major step. In 2019, he reached out to Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. This meeting turned out to be the beginning of a long-term collaboration with Microsoft for the nonprofit OpenAI. Many experts criticized Sam for this decision. Altman's choice was justified by his personal sympathy for Satya. In an interview, Sam said, quote, I think most CEOs are either great leaders or great managers. From what I've seen watching Satya, he's both. The team starts working hard, and from then on, OpenAI's successes are talked about every single year. In 2018, the GPT-1 language model was released. This language model pre-trained on a large amount of textual data from the internet. For the first time, artificial intelligence was able to generate human-like text on a large scale. In 2019, the company introduced GPT-2 to the public, which stunned the entire IT world. The model demonstrated great potential. It was created with a tenfold increase in both the number of parameters and the size of the training data set. In 2020, GPT-3 was released, which was called the largest and most advanced language model in the world. And in 2021, the company showed the first version of Dolly based on GPT-3. The important creation that made OpenAI famous among all walks of life is ChatGPT. Sam Altman proposed to turn the successful GPT-3 into a chatbot. Many engineers doubted the effectiveness of such a program. Even Greg Brockman, co-founder and chairman of the board of directors of OpenAI, doubted the success of the project. Imagine their surprise when ChatGPT became the hottest product ever. More than 100 million users engaged in less than two months. By comparison, it took TikTok nine months and Instagram two and a half years to reach similar numbers. We already got our crystal ball out and asked about ChatGPT's potential evolution into GPT-5 in the video in the description below. Check it out. To focus on OpenAI, Sam stepped down as chairman of the board at Y Combinator and fully immersed himself in the world of artificial intelligence. Altman's professionalism and natural talent skyrocketed the company's incredible performance. So when the news of his dismissal came out, it was like a cold day in July. Everybody was like, what? Why? It's rumored that Ilya Sutskever, co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, was key in Altman's dismissal. A researcher in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning, the father of ChatGPT, if you will. Some even consider him a modern genius. But who is he and how did he come up? Ilya was born in 1984 in Russia. When he was five years old, the family immigrated to Israel and already at the age of seven, Ilya developed an interest in programming. Ilya recalls that he was surprised to learn that computers can actually learn themselves to some extent. At that time, it seemed absolutely unrealistic. When he turned 16, the family moved to Canada. The first thing Ilya did was go to the Toronto Public Library, where he looked for a book on machine learning. From that moment on, Sutskever thought only about working on artificial intelligence. Naturally, Ilya enters the University of Toronto, where else? There, he receives a bachelor's degree in mathematics and then a master's degree followed by a PhD in computer science. Within the walls of the university, there will be an acquaintance of Ilya who will change his life. In the second year of his bachelor's degree in mathematics, Ilya approached the faculty to inquire about research in machine learning. 
At that time, in 2003, specialists did not take the study of artificial intelligence seriously. Only a few people were working in this direction, and one of them was Jeffrey Hinton. Ilya was advised to turn to him. The young man was very eager to join Hinton's research. The scientist asked the student to make an appointment, to which Ilya replied, Can we start right now? Such persistence impressed Hinton, and he gave Ilya some papers to read. They then began working on a research project, which initially looked like a dud. Computers didn't have enough computing power, nobody really cared about AI, and that was all until 2012, when a little program called AlexNet showed up. It was developed for the Imaginet competition, where Hinton and his best students, Sutskever and Alex Krzyzewski, built a system capable of analyzing thousands of images and training itself to recognize similar objects in reality with the highest degree of accuracy. It was the beginning of a revolution in artificial intelligence. The three of them, Hinton, Sutskever, and Krzyzewski, created a research startup called DNN Research. They continued to work on AI developments, but just four months into it, the company was acquired by, you guessed it, Google, and Ilya became one of the company's researchers. He started working at Google Brain on some pretty important projects. One such project was with DeepMind on the development of AlphaGo. It's an artificial intelligence-based program that plays Go, which is a logical board game that originated in ancient China. In 2016, AlphaGo defeated the world champion. This was an important event in the development of artificial intelligence. A machine surpassed a human in the most complex strategic board game. And then boom! Another important encounter in Ilya's life took place. One day, quote, I got an email from Sam that said, let's chat, end quote. Ilya was one of 10 developers that Altman and Musk wanted on their team. After the meeting, Ilya was very enthusiastic and interested in working with OpenAI, but he was still an employee at Google. After quite some deliberation, he joined the project and became its research director. Together with Altman, they went through setbacks and led the company to what it is now. It was Ilya, along with Greg, who brought Altman's idea of ChatGPT to life. The clear and simple user interface took the neural network viral. One million users in five days and a hundred million in two months. Ilya would casually mention that his parents' friends were using ChatGPT, which clearly brings him an abundance of joy. Today, Ilya Sutskever is one of the world's best experts in the field of machine learning. In 2015, MIT named him one of the 35 innovators in the IT world, and in 2023, he was also named one of the top 100 influential people by Time magazine. In November, when the conflict broke out, many of Altman's supporters accused Ilya. Then Musk came to Ilya's defense. He wrote a post saying that Ilya has high moral principles and doesn't seek any power. In many speeches and podcasts, Ilya talks about the dangers of uncontrolled artificial intelligence. Under his leadership, OpenAI has a project called Super Alignment, which is based on using artificial intelligence to detect threats from itself. Today, 20% of OpenAI's computing power is dedicated to creating defenses against superintelligent AI. In October, Ilya gave a TED Talk on the dangers of AI. Quote, my goal is to point out the existence of a force that many of you don't realize exists. End quote. We got a link to his speech in our Telegram channel. Sign up, check it out, and or in the description below. Perhaps the two major partners disagreed. In an interview, Altman says almost nothing about the safety of the projects being developed. The businessman is interested in capacity and turnover, and Sutskever, as chief scientist, realizes the dangers and seems to try to prevent a disaster. Once the Altman scandal hit, the media got a whiff of a mysterious project, QSTAR. It was developed under Ilya's leadership, and it remains unknown what OpenAI specialists discovered. But later, several of them wrote a letter to the board of directors with a warning, quote, the new project is dangerous, for mankind, end quote. You think this is jokes and games? I don't know. This may have been the reason for Altman's firing. As an official letter stated, quote, he has not been consistently candid in his communications with the board, hindering its ability to exercise its responsibilities. The board no longer has confidence in his ability to continue leading open AI, end quote. Did Sam really know the dangers of the new project, but did nothing? Because now he's back as CEO. Does that scare anybody? Does a strong AI threaten mankind? It's not yet clear. Super Alignment might have the answers, but they don't really talk much. To date, a team of scientists is working on developing a framework to control future and potentially dangerous AI. 
But will security developments keep up with the pace of Super AI updates? Or will OpenAI continue to work at its usual pace, prioritizing money over the safety of humanity? Hopefully, Sam Altman will not repeat Robert Oppenheimer's fate and become the, quote, father of the killing machine, end quote. And what do you think? Let us know in the comments how you feel about this entire ordeal and stay tuned for more news from the world of high tech.